All right, hello, hello, and welcome to A VO's Journey. My name is Anthony Pika. This show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business and sidestep all of the crazy things that I seem to step on. So today is Monday. Happy Monday, everybody. I had to I had to first off start off by saying that something's going on with the platform with Restream and it for whatever reason is struggling. Uh, connecting and doing things. I don't know what the issue is, but uh, I'm I apologize because I don't think it's allowing me to actually see any any chat. So I'm getting, I have to tell you, I'm getting kind of close to. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We, we've had challenges with restream. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm um, again, you know, there was a period of time where I I was going to look around for something else, but. You know, I think it might be that time again uh, to look around for another streaming platform because I am very uh, frustrated that I can't get your chats and everything like that, and uh, it's a it's a it's a shame. But today, I've actually got a really really great um, a really great session set up. We're going to be talking about uh, three ways to have the best audiobook audition. All right, it looks like maybe we might be coming online with some of the uh, uh, different platforms here. Could you post uh, maybe something, say hello in the chat and see if if I can actually see you? That would be uh, very helpful. Thank you. I see some people joining in on Instagram. It's great to have you guys. Thank you. Uh, awesome. I got Storm uh, posting something over on YouTube. Thank you so much. Uh, I think you. I think if you you're, you're really gonna like today's session, and and part of the session is oh here we go. We got a lot of people popping in. That's a good thing. Part of today's session is we're gonna I'm gonna actually gonna show you how to go and do some things. So people on Instagram, the first couple of parts uh, you'll be able to hear and see me, but then I'm going to go and uh, actually show my, my screen so that might not work out as well for you, but I wanted to make sure that you guys were included. So anyways, uh, I get this question a lot, and actually this question comes from a new person in a VO's Journey Facebook group, and, and their question uh, was, how do I... You know, how do I know if my audition is good enough? Uh, like, you know, for, you know, and, and, and I think that's a really great question. And I'm going to, today I want to dive in for audiobooks because I think there's a really great way to um, really discover and, and use the resources out there when you're trying to audition for audiobooks. And, uh, but I, I wanted to go a, a little further and actually do, uh, thanks, Woody. Yeah, Facebook. For whatever reason, they just restream and Facebook are just having, and it's been a while. And it's a shame because there's a lot of people that watch in Facebook and they have a lot of questions and things. And um, I can't seem to see any of their chats with what's going on. So uh, that's a struggle and I apologize for that. But um, uh, so anyways, moving on with this, I, like I said about that, I'm going to be looking for a new platform to stream over. So uh, anyways, um, so the first thing I want to talk about <clears throat> is uh, I wanted to do three different ways that you could have your best audiobook audition possible. So the first thing I want to do is picking uh, picking actually how many minutes to audition with and uh, what to do uh, when you're faced with you know a big script. So the first thing I, I like to do when I when I when I find something that I'm auditioning for when it's an audiobook is I always stick to the rule. So number one is stick to the rule of pick two to three minutes of the script to audition for. Okay, don't don't you know if they send you ten pages, you don't need to audition with all ten pages. Okay, for a couple of reasons. One, that's just going to take you way too long. Two, you have to think that the person, the the person who is uh, listening to your audition, they're not going to listen for ten pages. They're just not. They're going to listen for the first. You know, you know, it'd be it would be great if they listened for the first couple of minutes. I mean, that would be a huge deal. If they listen for two minutes of you, then you you're in. Okay, but you need to pick just two to three minutes, and that's it. Really, I mean, you don't need any more than that. Now, the only caveat to that would be if you are, for example, doing something like uh, multiple characters and they specifically asked you to do you know, specifics here and there, that might equal to be a little bit more than two to three minutes, but stick between two to three minutes. Once you pick those two to three minutes to narrate, 
I want you to read through those two to three minutes at least two times before you narrate. Okay, and this does a couple of things. Uh, this is um, <laughs> high flyer here. I hear you. This is uh, uh, something that I think will really, really help out when becoming fam uh, familiar with a piece. Because you, you notice that the the more times we read something, the more times we practice, it's it's easier. And I find that the more familiar you are with something. Okay, you're just going to be better at it. You're not going to stumble as much. It's not going to sound all choppy. It's going to sound a lot more like you are the expert at what you are reading or you're telling a story as opposed to, you know, you being uh, just reading something for the first time. OK, so the first thing is, is take a piece, look for two to three minutes, then I want you to read through it at least two times those two to three minutes. Then I want you to narrate those two to three minutes for your piece, okay? All right, so that's the first part. That's the first thing that you can do to have a better audition. The second thing is, is I want you to, no matter what you do or where you audition, always, always, always edit, fully edit, fully master your work, your audition. Do not send in a raw file for your audition, now, don't get me wrong. That does not mean that you have to, you know, put it, you know, do do all these things, you know, take take hours to edit two minutes. But I want you to make sure that you get a process down where you are fully editing and mastering these um, auditions, because, listen, you're you're competing. So y you don't want to send some junky product to your you know to the author or the publisher or the whoever is is listening to your work because that is part of the whole package okay it is part of the whole package so you want to make sure that you are doing your very best by the way on a, a, a side note of that you also want to make sure that you are saying every single word correctly you are pronouncing every single word right OK, that is critical. I can't tell you how many times I've edited work and, and listened to people and helped coach people and they, they say the words wrong. I do it myself. You have to say everything right. OK, especially if you're auditioning for audiobooks and things on like ACX or a lot of us work directly with authors. Right. We work with a lot of indie authors. And that is something that you have to take in consideration. Pay attention to the words that you are actually saying, making sure they are right. If you are confused, please look them up. OK, get an idea of how you should say them correctly. OK, super important. All right. So, again, always fully edit and master your work. Make sure your spacing, everything is correct. I actually like to make my work exactly like I'm going to submit it for an audiobook submission on ACX. So it's going to be the, you know, the RMS is going to be corrected. Uh, the, the zero to 0.5 seconds in the beginning or 0.5 seconds to a second in the beginning. And then, you know, one to five seconds at the end of Dead Space, right? And with the with the uh, correct at negative three, no higher than negative three dB with an RMS between negative 18 and negative 22. All right. I like to keep it there and I like to make sure that I am producing a repeatable quality product that people can count on every single time. And if it boils down to. You know, I'm an author and I like these couple of people. Well, who do I pick? Well, I'm going to go with this one because their work just sounds like the production sounds better than this person. OK, now I do get the question sometimes, hey, Anthony, do I add music to auditions? Do I do this? Do I do that? And you know what? That's that is up to you. I would say try not to do too much when it comes to that, because you don't know what the author has in their mind. They might not want music. And if you add music, it might make them feel like this doesn't work. Right. So don't add music of starters. Right. Just edit and fully master the work so that it is the top notch. You don't have clicks. You don't have peaks. There's, there's, uh, your breaths are natural. Don't take out all your breaths. Whatever you do, we don't speak without breathing. 
However, here's a rule of thumb without breathing, and we'll get to number three. When breathing in auditions or in narrating, period, okay, the only time you want to take out breaths, we're talking about narrating audiobooks here, the only time you want to take out breaths is if the breathing is, is taking the listener out of the illusion of the story. Okay, we call it suspension of uh, disbelief, right? So in the, the in the theater, we call suspension of disbelief, meaning that the 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 viewer or the listener in this case in this case they suspend their disbelief that all of this is fake and not real, okay? To enjoy the piece and get caught up in it. So with that being said, you want to make sure that everything you do even in your audition, does not detract the listener from suspending that disbelief and getting, it's just fancy terms for getting caught up in the story and not ripped away. See, the, the thing here is, is that we want to tell a story. We want people to go on a journey with us and we want them to stay on that journey. The longer we can keep them on that journey, the better. You know it's a good author, right? We, we love books by authors and we love movies and all these things that keep us in that moment for that entire time. Like those books that we just have to finish, right? They're, they're just, they're in our head. You can't get your mind away from the story because it was crafted in such a manner that it keeps you engaged the whole time. That's what we need to do as narrators is keep the listener engaged. And we do that by making sure that nothing in the audio that we send and starting with the audition rips the listener out of that story we are telling. And yes, even in two to three minutes, like these are some things that can rip someone out of the story. All right. This it could be um, someone says uh, blah, blah, uh, they're talking and then you get a <gasps> there's a weird breath. You know what I'm talking about. We've all had those things, especially if we stopped and then start it again. And there's that little weird breath. We're like talking like <gasps> and then it cuts off. <laughs> right. Or we're talking. And there's a big click. There's all sorts of things that rip up. There is a huge gap because we were looking at something, we waited or something, we, we, we got out of breath because we're not as comfortable speaking yet, uh, you know, just continuously speaking. So our breathing is all messed up or we're working on a piece where the sentences are so long that it's like you need a ventilator just to keep going. OK, um, gosh, the ventilator. That's uh, anyways. Uh, <laughs> so the thing is, <laughs> our world today, right? I said ventilators and things popped into my head. Um, so anyways, I think that the key here is to remember, please, please do the very best that you can to keep people engaged so that they don't get ripped out of the story you're telling. And we do that by completely making sure that everything you turn in. And of course, you guys, this goes on to everything else too, right? This goes on to commercial work. This goes on to everything. Either anything that you turn in for audition purposes or anything, always make sure it's your very best. Always make sure it's your very best. Okay. So with all that being said, let's move on to number three. And this is something that I'm really excited to show you. OK, uh, people on Instagram, uh, I'm going to try to talk through this with you guys because you can't see. I do wonder if I could I, I guess I could turn you around. I don't think that's going to work, is it? No, it's not going to work. I was trying to turn them around to see if they can see. It. But anyways, what I want to do is uh, I want to let's see, take you over here and let's see, pull you down like this. And I'm going to go ahead and try to manipulate the screen a little bit here. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go. Okay, so you should be seeing my screen. And um, let me go ahead and done that. What we're going to do is uh, you can see on my screen we're going to we're looking at the um, the piece here. Or we're looking at my actual ACX profile. And what I want to do is the third, the third thing is figuring out if what you are doing is actually what A, the author is expecting, and B, I want you to be able to figure out 
is that my audition actually good enough? Okay, so I'm gonna give you a tip on how to do this. I think you're really gonna like this. So what I did, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply go here and I'm gonna go to um, titles accepting auditions. All right. So if you're if you're watching on Instagram, I'm gonna like I said talk through this and I, and and but you know you can't see it. So basically on ACX I went to I'm on my profile and I went to titles accepting auditions and the first book that pop up is body language. Uh, that is spelled wrong. <laughs> um, but we're going to, and, and it's, but it's spelled right on the book. Anyways, we're going to uh, click on it for the purposes. It's not matter on this particular book, why that's spelled wrong in the title here. But anyways, what we're going to do is let's say that you want to audition for this book. Okay. And you want to see, man, do I, how do I know if, if I'm going to be good enough for this book. So I want to show you a little a little trick. So here, uh, basically, I've clicked on the book, you guys. I'm on the page where we actually see the audition and the information. I want you to go to title information, and I want you to click view this title in, uh, on Amazon. Now, that's going to pull me up to Amazon, and it takes me over. Now, here's the key. I want you to, once you get to this place, I want you to come up here, and I want you to look at the categories on the screen, okay? And right here, this one is in science and math. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on this, right? And once you get to this part, okay, you're gonna notice that I'm in science and math. Now the whole idea here is to start to get a feel for what other people are actually doing in that genre. Because listen, this is so important. When you are trying to narrate a book and you're trying to audition, the people who are sending out the audition, the author, the, the publishers, okay, and they're, for example, in this case, they're using science and math, that, that, that subcategory, okay, and let's say that it's in medicine, all right, we're going to click on medicine, um, relevant today, okay, and basically when I click on medicine, it comes up uh, with a bunch of books, all right, that's in that subcategory. Now, what I want to do is I want to click on these books and I want to see if there's narration and if there's narration, okay, then I can actually uh, go through it and listen to see what it is. Now, another, uh, so what I want to do is uh, first we'll do this. So we'll, we'll click on the first one. All right. The great influenza. And uh, I'm going to go here and I'm going to click on audiobook. Now that brings me an audiobook, and <laughs> that's funny. Uh, Scott Brick, uh, you know, I, I, I love Scott Brick, and um, has, he's a great guy. And, uh, anyways, so he narrated this book, and what I can do is I can listen to the audible samples. So here we go. Their lungs had resembled those of men who had died from poison gas or pneumonic plague, a more virulent form of bubonic plague. Whatever those crewmen had had, it had not spread. Well, I tell you what, I, I do apologize up front as we're listening because of everything going on right now. This is tough times for all of us, and I know this is something that um, I've learned even more about the great plagues throughout our history because of everything that's happening to us. Um, so I do apologize about that, uh, but I did want to use this as an example of how you can find uh, ways to actually listen to how other people audition. I want to point out some, or how other people are sounding in this genre. Now, listen, Scott Brick is Scott Brick. Uh, you, you know, he is, you know, one of a kind, uh, really incredible uh, narrator. I don't know what happened there. Oh, I clicked on it. But <laughs> anyway, so I just, I, I did want to point that out. What I would like to do too, is I would like to go to um, Audible. And now that we know that we're looking in the medicine section, right? We can go to browse and we went to, it was in um, science and technology, right? I think. And it was in medicine. And this is even better, right? Because now if you notice on there, and by the way, I had gone through many of those before we started and it actually showed there was, there was a bunch of books that also did not have, um, did not have narrations to them, did not have audiobooks, which by the way, is another tip, which we'll talk about later on uh, in, another, in another YouTube video or another live where you can actually find work by doing this same sort of search 
for books that don't have um, narrators. But anyways, let's continue here. So what I can do is I'm in now science and technology and I'm in now I'm on audible for people on Instagram. And uh, basically I can click on here and now I can listen to <laughs> this. This one's the ultimate guide to uh, medical marijuana. So, you know, we went to the opposite uh, thing here, but I can click on this and a lot of people have been making use of marijuana since ancient Chinese emperor. There we go. Um, <laughs> the point here, and I hope you're getting the gist of this whole thing, is that I can just literally go through these things and just click on one right after another and just start to get an idea uh, of, you know, how people are sounding. The herbal magic. Discover natural magic for herbs, flowers, and essential oils. Hmm. I, you know, it's just it's interesting stuff. So anyway, anyways, there's the influenza book. But the point is, is using Audible, you're going to go ahead and you're going to be able to listen to all these different samples from people who are narrating in this genre, in this category and subcategory, which will then allow you to compare your work to the work that is out there and it's a great way for you to determine does your work stack up to that does it sound similar are you narrating in the same fashion in the same style as these people are narrating because perfect example if i'm listening to this these types of books and then i go and search for a different genre the narration styles might be different and i might want to change my my the way i'm doing things a little bit and this is so important because this helps us connect with what the author, what the publisher is trying to do. Does that make sense? Uh, and, and this is a great tool, a great technique I find, let me switch back over, a great technique I find to actually increase my chances of getting work by connecting again with the genre, with the type of book that I'm doing, and making sure that the way I narrate is going to sound familiar because you have to think the author, the publisher, they are going to be – they have a certain idea in their mind about how things should sound, right? And they're going to expect it to sound that way. All right, you guys. I hope that helps. I'd love to take uh, any questions you guys might have about this topic. Uh, it, it To me, I love – you know, this is one of the things I love about audiobooks. You know, you have the ability to really find some great, great, great information out there and to be able to, um, you know, d change what you need to change in order to get the job. So let's go ahead and, and, and pop over. I want to thank everybody. We've got lots of people coming in all over, which is wonderful. Uh oh. I hate when I do that. Sorry, Instagram. I switched here. That was my that was my wall with stuff on it. Uh, we've got lots of people. Buzz, voiceover fella, uh, Kurt. What's up, uh, Loibin? I think I apologize if I said that wrong. We got um, oh Paran, Paran, Paran. Trying to say it right. Uh, we got Jose. We got Bendy. We got Josh. What's up, everybody? A lot of people. Um, we got Pace. Uh, let's see. Over on YouTube, we got Storm. Hello, Brian. What's up? We got Luis. Hello, Big Jim. Hey, my man. I love that Insta, uh, that uh, uh, LinkedIn post that you made, uh, Big Jim, of you and the sharks running around. I thought that was funny. Uh, Tom, let's see. Good job. Andy, hello. Um, let's see. Zach, hey, what's up? Uh, I know Facebook. Thank you. Fly here. Air. Yep. Uh, let's see. Simone. Hi, Anthony. Hope everything is well. Thank you. My family and I are doing well. Thank you very much. Um, I don't think my son would agree because he's got lots of homework, but <laughs> it's okay. Uh, let's see. Follow all the author's instructions to the letter. Great, Rich. Absolutely. You know, you want to make sure you follow the author's instructions to the letter. There's a lot of times where you give a lot, uh, you get a lot of instructions, and then there's times where you don't give very many at all or none. So that's a, you know, that's a thing too. Another thing on the on a side note about uh, when you audition on ACX and you send in an audition, there is a little section that says, you know, a message with it. Keep the message short. 
Okay, keep the message short. But if you like something about what's happening, don't be afraid to, you know, connect with the author. Maybe you went to their website and you found their web page and, you know, they're about they're doing something right now. Don't be afraid to connect. We're all, I mean, more now than ever, you guys, more now than ever, we need to connect with each other the best way we can through social media. At least, I mean, this is the way we, you know, through the telephone, through email, whatever ways we can connect right now, we need it more than ever. Um, let's see. Good point about the breast. Thanks, Rich. Uh, Jillian. Super hard. Thank you, Jillian. That's very nice. Uh, let's see. Luis, uh, wouldn't you want to make sure the samples you are listening to are from books that are selling really well? In other words, it's possible to come across bad narrators, correct? Um, yes, that's true. It is possible to come across bad narrators. I think as you notice, Luis, too, I was looking at bestsellers as well. Uh, that's a, a good way to do it. But, you know, remember, uh, there's so many books out there. There's so many books. I think if you took a sample size, you know, of 10 to 15, which is a lot, if you think to listen to those samples, uh, you're going to get a good idea of how things are sounding and maybe throw out the outliers. Right. But I, I think you'll get a good idea. But great, great, um, you know, great point. And, and if it, if it is worrying you, don't be afraid to, to listen to the bestsellers. Thank you, Louise. Uh, let's see. Uh, Rich says, what is the most common file format to submit auditions? So, uh, MP3 files are usually the most common and that's because, you know, it's a smaller file. It's an audition. It's not being used as the final product, even though on ACX, uploading to Amazon, it has to be an MP3 format anyways. So most of those are that way because audiobook files are so big, Rich, that, you know, you the w w submitting WAV files would just blow, you know, <laughs> just blow up every, all, the, all the servers and everything all the time. So most of it is MP3 files uh, after it has been fully edited and mastered and so forth and formatted. You can usually save them and submit them in an MP3 format. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much, you guys. Anybody else have any other questions? Again, thank you so much. I apologize about Facebook. And uh, but I want to thank everybody who did tune in. And I'm imagining some people came over from Facebook to YouTube. Thank you for that. By the way, we are uh, if you haven't noticed, we are over a thousand subscribers. Thank you so much. Now we're going for eleven hundred. <laughs> so we're going to keep going one step up at a time. And uh, we're still getting new subscribers every day. So thank you so much for that. If you get an opportunity, please go ahead and like and subscribe and retweet this. And, you know, whatever you can do, I really appreciate it. Uh, uh oh, we have another question that popped in. Lazarus, I love that name. Uh, do you have a vocal chain specifically for audiobooks that works perfectly every time, or do you need to change them often? Thanks, Lazarus. After a while, uh, like I do, and, and most people do, we, we come up with our own vocal chain, we have uh, a method of doing things. Yes, I have a vocal chain. In fact, what I do now. Uh, I actually, with the equipment I have, everything is preset. So about 90% of the work is actually done while I'm recording <laughs> because I have a Universal Audio Apollo Twin. I have presets saved within my digital interface on my computer so that when I'm recording, like right now, what you're hearing actually is going through uh, my system where it's actually compressing what I'm saying and it is taking out bad frequencies and things like that before, you know, um, you know, it's, it's happening while you're listening to it. So when I record, I'm already there's already compression and EQ and all things added. For me, the only thing left to really do is uh, have a, a effects rack that I use to um take away some, you know, like a, a D clicker and a, uh, any mouth noise and, and some, you know, background noise, if there is some, depending on where I'm, I'm uh, recording from. And then I just go ahead and have a shortcut key for my um, how to actually uh, get my RMS correctly, and then I'm done. And all of that literally takes a few seconds, because most of it's already finished. And so this is something that has 
evolved over years. But yes, I do have uh, I do have a way of doing it, and I, it stays the same now. But when I first started, every every time I did it, it was different, and it was it was oh, it was so exhausting. And I think that exhaustion led me to try to figure out you know, how to put together a vocal chain of some sort of, you know, method to the madness. Okay. Great question. Great question, Lazarus. All right. And by the way, I do have uh, videos on this uh, on, on my on my YouTube channel about, you know, mastering for ACX, editing and so forth. And I, I've done a very a variety of videos. And I also have some courses, some inexpensive courses on the web, on my website for Adobe Audition and so forth. And I'm about to come out one for with uh, for Audacity, uh, how to do all these things and edit and master uh, for Audacity as well as uh, ACX and so forth. So anyways, that'll be soon, hopefully this week. But hey, thank you guys so much, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please stay safe. As always, thank you from the bottom of my heart and my family for being a part of this journey and letting me be a part of your journey. You guys have a wonderful Monday. I will see you tomorrow. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye.